Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. We are here now uh, in our going through the Bible series and we're starting with the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. So I invite you to turn to your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28. So that's Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28. And uh, here we read. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. God bless the reading of his word. That was Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. Made in God's image. So, the background here, this is the first book of the Bible, and the, uh, the author is Moses. And the book was recorded um, around about 1450 BC. It's possibly older. And uh, Moses records here for us um, the creation of all things and human beings, um, which took place uh, a little bit further back in time. How much further back? We just don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. Um, important is that Adam and Eve um, are, are human ancestors, they are real people and real events, and this is where our journey begins. All right. So the topic here is what it means to be made in God's image. Okay, so as we look at these verses, um, in verse 26, we notice, let us, uh, it says, let us, who is us? That's the Trinity already expressed there. God the Father, uh, God the Son, that is our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, God the Holy Spirit. Um, the uh, whole Trinity uh, is there. That's what us refers to. Uh, in our image, um, to be like us, you know, in our image can also be translated as um, according to our likeness. That's the NASB translation, according to our likeness. Uh, so image and likeness are basic, basically pretty much the same. Um, they're synonymous in that sense. Um, verse 27 is, um, uh, we understand that God is the creator, right, of, of everything. Uh, he, uh, we are his creation, uh, human beings, uh, male and female, right? But what does it mean that we are created in his own image? What does it mean that we are created in his own image? This means that um, while we are not God himself, we have uh, certain characteristics or attributes uh, that he has. Uh, we feel, uh, we think, uh, we love, right? We have uh, desires, uh, often, more than often enough, not very good ones, but um, that is us as, as, as human beings. Um, God, however, he has attributes, um, characteristics that we don't have. So uh, six of these attributes, um, which you want to consider, um, they belong to God himself and they cannot be transmitted to uh, other beings or other created things. So these are om omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence, immutability, self-existence and eternality. You know, being eternal, okay? So that's something, the, those are attributes God only has. And um, so we have to understand that and may we humbly uh, surrender uh, to God in that sense, understanding that God is God and we are we. So then in verse 28, we see that God blesses mankind at that point. He speaks to us. Uh, he gives us specific instructions, right? To be fruitful and multiply. And here's a big one, to fill the earth and govern it. We're emphasizing, for emphasizing this. So this is a big one, to fill the earth and govern it. 
So to reign over, as we read, means to rule over other created beings of a different category, uh, uh, mainly animals. All right. So it's just one thing we want to consider um, that we have a specific um, uh, purpose that God has assigned us to. All right. So far, so good. But something happens hereafter. And I encourage you um, to read Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 3 yourself. Um, I'm always going to encourage you to read as much of the Bible as you can, right? ideally on a daily basis. Um, but read Genesis chapter 1 to 3 yourself and uh, see what happens there. There's just a few things I'm going to point out. So before the fall of man, in other words, the fall means uh, people rebelling against God. That is Adam and Eve rebelling against God. Before that happens, there's a temptation that the devil... The devil is Satan. He's the enemy of God and people. Right? It's very important. Um, he's a created being, uh, a fallen angel, um, a demon, uh, so to say, and also the the ruler of the demons. Um, um, so he's he's real. Um, uh, gives them. He makes them. A, gives them. A, gives Adam and Eve a false promise. So in Genesis three five, we read about this promise. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both God and evil. God bless you know his word. As soon as you eat it, this refers to the forbidden fruit. Um, I'm hoping you will re uh, read Genesis 1 to 3 to learn more about that. And that promise is the promise that the, Satan makes is to, is to Adam and Eve is to be like God. So our human ancestors. Um, gave into this temptation. God commanded them not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good, of e good and evil, but they gave into this temptation, being tempted by Satan. Why? Why? Why did they give in? Uh, because of pride. They were prideful, and they wanted to become like God, and they gave into the um, the devil's Satan's temptation. What happens then in Genesis 3.22, we read, When the Lord God said, Look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. What if they reach out, take fruit from the tree of life, and eat it? Then they will live forever. God bless the universe word. So again, we have become like us, right? The Trinity is there. Um, our Lord Jesus Christ is there within the Trinity. And um, so... Um, now, the, um, they're forbidden to eat from the tree of life. There were two trees, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the, uh, the, the tree of life in, in the Garden of Eden. And so God um, then prevents them and uh, casts them Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. So that is the fall of mankind, which we uh, know as the fall, right? The fall of mankind. What I want to point out here to you is um, is results, and um, so what are the results of this this outcome? So all of us, every person, uh, we're all born with a sin nature, and we have a sinful inclination to do evil. So not only that. So in other words, by default, we're enemies of God. We're, we're broken sinners. There's nothing good in us. Uh, that can be redeemed in our own strength. And our inclination is due to our sin nature is to do evil and evil only. But not only that, um, but people um, worship things, objects, that is created things, um, humans and animals instead of God. So people worship things, objects, that is created things, right? Humans and animals instead of God. And that is not the original design, as we read in our uh, uh, scripture passage today. So in other words, these created things uh, are, are idols. So here we read uh, in the, from the prophet Isaiah. It's a bit longer, but uh, bear with me here. It's chapter Isaiah 44, verse 9 to 20. The prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament writes, that's Isaiah chapter 44, 9 to 20. 
How foolish are those who manufacture idols. These prized objects are really worthless. The people who worship idols don't know this, so they are all put to shame. Who but a fool would make his own god, an idol that cannot help him one bit? All who worship idols will be disgraced, along with these craftsmen, mere humans who claim they can make a god. They may all stand together, but they will stand in terror and shame. The blacksmith stands at his forge to make a sharp tool, pounding and shaping it with all his might. His work makes him hungry and weak. It makes him thirsty and faint. Then the woodcarver measures a block of wood and draws a pattern on it. He works with chisel and plane and carves it into a human figure. He gives it human beauty and puts it in a little shrine. He cuts down cedars. He selects the cypress and the oak. He plants the pine in the forest to be nourished by the rain. Then he uses part of the wood to make a fire. With it, he warms himself and bakes his bread. Then, yes, it's true, he takes the rest of it and makes himself a god to worship. He makes an idol and bows down in front of it. He burns part of the tree to roast his meat and to keep himself warm. He says, ah, that fire feels good. Then he takes what's left and makes his god a carved idol. He falls down in front of it, worshipping and praying to it. Rescue me, he says. You are my god. Such stupidity and ignorance. Their eyes are closed and they cannot see. Their minds are shut and they cannot think. The person who made the idol never stops to reflect. Why? It's just a block of wood. I burned half of it for heat and used it to bake my bread and roast my meat. How can the rest of it be a god? Should I bow down to worship a piece of wood? The poor deluded fool feeds on ashes. He trusts something that can't help him at all. Yet he cannot bring himself to ask, is this idol that I'm holding in my hand a lie? God bless you, his word. Wow. So this is a big one. Um, I encourage you to read this passage again yourself. Um, that is uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 44, 90, 20. Read it yourself again and revisit it. And this is such a big one here. Why? Because there's a ripple effect. So people are moving away from being made in God's image. Remember, we're still talking about being made in God's image to an illusion, a falsehood, a man-made false idea of God, right? So that's why in the Bible it's, uh, we have a small g, God, which is not God himself, but an idea, an illusion of God. Now, there's a, uh, this is the ripple effect here, and Paul explains this further. So um, this rebellion of God continues. As we read in Paul, uh, Paul writing Romans, Chapter 1, verses 20 to 23. Romans chapter 1, verses 20 to 23. I encourage you to flip to it, flip open. And uh, we're going to read that together. Very important passage. So, Romans chapter 1, 20 to 23. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they would not worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused, claiming to be wise they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshipping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshipped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. God bless the universe word. So, to say it differently, people create their own God 
with a small g, and are by default under the influence of Satan, the devil, um, that is, enemies of God. And um, that's very important to understand here. And so there's um, the enemy, Satan, is blinding people's hearts and minds. So, okay, so what does this mean for you and me? How does this apply to you? It means that God did not leave us in this fallen, hopeless, and sinful condition, but he comes himself as God in the flesh, that is namely our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to atone for, that is to die for our sins, uh, so that we can be reconciled to God again, right? So to reverse the, the effects of the fall. So Jesus himself restores us back into a personal relationship with God. And so we read, Paul reminds us of this, uh, being restored back into a personal relationship with God in 2 Corinthians, 2 book of Corinthians, chapter 5, 14 to 17. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. God bless the reading of his word. So this means that we are called back to God through, through Jesus Christ, who accomplished for us what we could never do in our own ability or strength. There's not enough good deeds we can do apart from, from our relationship with Jesus, uh, with a repentant heart and letting Jesus live in, our, in, in and through our hearts and lives. There's nothing we can do. It's Jesus himself who restores our broken relationship with God. Yeah. So Jesus intercedes for us and medi mediates be uh, before an almighty, all-powerful, absolutely holy God. Remember the Trinity? Um, so I mentioned um, there is no other way but uh, to be reconciled to God through Jesus. Uh, Jesus makes this clear in John 14, 6, where he says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. And John 15, 5, apart from me, you can do nothing. God bless the his word. So this is absolute truth. God confirms uh, Christ's sacrifice on our behalf through the event of the resurrection. And um, if, if you're interested in... in uh, you know, history, for example, there's even historical evidence for the resurrection. Um, uh, uh, that's basically four parts. Jesus died and was buried. Then there's the empty tomb. Uh, then there's the belief of the apostles and the conversion of Paul when Saul became Paul. So those are his, uh, some historical pieces of evidence for the resurrection. There's more, but... Um, those are just a, just a few things to consider. Uh, however, and this is important, big one, um, believing in Christ is more than just accepting facts. Um, as the Bible tells us, uh, Jesus tells us, um, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. God bless the reading of his word. That's John 10, 27 to 28. I'll read it. Uh, that one will read, repeat one more time here. Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. All right. God bless the reading of his word. So what are you going to do? So, since Christ gave his own life instead of us, we have to surrender to him with repentant, obedient hearts and believe in him. And also consider um, Jesus, as you know or may know, um, died. He was crucified on a cross and 
and uh, died on a, on a cross. Um, why did Jesus freely give up his life to die on a cross? Why did Jesus freely give up his life to die on a cross? Because Jesus loves you and me. So what that means is, right? And thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise be the Lord. So uh, what that means is to keep your Bible open daily, right? Uh, learn more about Jesus, stay close to him in prayer and praise, and also understand that the Christian life is um, its not an easy walk. It's filled with hardship and persecution. Uh, there's pain and suffering, right? It um, doesn't matter what anybody else tells you or teaches you. Um, there's persecution, there's the uh, temptation to give in to compromise, to compromise with the world and, and the falsehood and the emptiness and the uh, the enemies, the, the devil, Satan's lies, right? So uh, the Christian life is challenging and um, it's important to understand that. However, understand that as you continue your walk of faith with Jesus, that it is Jesus who uh, um, not just initiates, he begins your faith in him, but he also completes this. He's the author and perfecter. He's the author and finisher of our faith. How that all works together? Well, the Bible tells us a little bit, but we don't understand everything. But he, he does it. He does help us in ways that, um, you know, may not be what you or, or I or what we expect. Um, yet as believer, um, we have his faithful promises. Um, um, namely, he's given us his word, the Bible, and he will see us through. Jesus Christ will see you and me through and all who follow him as Christians, as believers, uh, from now until uh, eternity, uh, that's on Judgment Day, when Christ returns, right? because Christ is coming back the second and last time. Okay, so be of good courage now that you understand what it means to be made in God's image, um, just like Jesus Christ was made in our image. Um, understand that we are we, uh, God is God. Jesus is God in the flesh. And uh, so um, it only makes sense to turn to him and surrender to him. Uh, so something to think about. Uh, revisit the verses. Uh, we just, uh, the, the key word passage we read. And um, yeah, keep on exploring and reading. Uh, keep the Bible open. The best Bible always is an open Bible. So until next time. May God bless you and keep you.